What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. Today we're going to be talking about filtering data in columns that have mixed data types within them. And I'll be honest with you, all the solutions I'm going to share with you today, they all have trade-offs to make. So be sure to stick around and watch through all of them because depending on your situation, you may decide to use one solution or another. So imagine we have an application with multiple pages or views. On each one of those pages, right, the application can show different types of data. So we may have one page that only contains string data, one page that only contains numeric type data, maybe some other pages have a mix of string and numeric types data. And we're gonna store all the data for our app, uh, for all these different pages within our app within one table, in which case we're calling it pages here. And you can see we have different columns for the different page names, uh, the data values themselves, so the values that we're storing on each page, and the data types of each one of those values. And that data type column in our table serves a very specific purpose. Because the data value column is of type varchar, even though it's going to be storing lots of different data types in it, the actual data type that that row of data represents inside the data value column is going to be stored in the data type column. And we've decided to store our data this way for ease of maintenance in our app, right? Our application only needs to be reaching out to this one table, as well as the ease of maintenance in the database too, right? If we have lots of different pages in our application, if we needed to create a separate table in the database for each one, that would be a lot of things to maintain and there'd be a lot of duplication of data there that we wouldn't really need. And so storing the data in this format, while advantageous for maintainability like we already talked about, does come with a few caveats. And one of the more disastrous caveats with this type of storage solution comes when you start filtering this data. So let's take a look at an example query. So imagine I want to pull one page of data from this table, my numbers only page one, uh, where my values are equal to 1.2. See, we surround the 1.2 with quotes because we know our data value column is of type varchar. Um, and if we run that query, we don't actually get any results, right? And that's because the data that's actually stored in our table has values of 1.20 for that particular page, right? And so this is problematic because in our application, this data is really represented by a numeric data type, by a decimal data type. Uh, but when we go to query our data, it, it, SQL Server isn't doing a numeric type comparison, it's doing a string comparison. And so if we want SQL Server to instead do a numeric comparison, so it returns either 1.2s or 1.20s or 1.20000, right? We want uh, to basically remove those quotes from around our 1.2, so it does force a numeric comparison. And when we execute this query, you'll see we, we return the rows that we now expect because we're doing this numeric comparison with the downside of that SQL Server is having to implicitly convert all of our data values on our table to a decimal data type or a numeric data type to be able to do this, com this numeric comparison. So obviously this, this, you know, this query is taking a performance hit because it's having to convert every single data value uh, for the rows that we requested for our page uh, with, that contains numbers only. But it's not necessarily a problem if the performance of the query overall is, is pretty good, right? If we have a relatively small number of rows for the particular page name that we filtered on, I may not consider this to be that big of a deal uh, because the performance is still fast. But while I may not be too concerned about the implicit conversion performance in this particular case, there is one thing that I am very concerned about, and that's the order that SQL Server is executing these predicate filters. And so this is a good point to take a break real quick and talk about SQL Server's cost-based query optimizer. The query optimizer takes into account indexes and whether they cover all the fields that you want and the cardinality of the data in those indexes and a whole bunch of other factors to determine in which order it's gonna filter the data in your query. And so in this instance, it happened to first filter on our page name, which returned a much smaller subset of rows before doing the implicit conversions to be able to do the comparison to 1.2. 
And that's where the problem is. We've basically got lucky with this query working right now. It's returning the results we want, but it's not guaranteed that it will always work that way. Right, so let's say we change this query to include multiple page names. We can do this with a like statement or we can use an in statement. But as you'll notice with both of these filters, we're picking pages that only contain numeric data, so there shouldn't be any problems. However, in these cases, SQL Server decides to not filter our rows based on that page name first, but to actually do the implicit conversion uh, to our numeric data type first and then filter the page data. And what happens then is we get this error message about not being able to convert our varchar data to our numeric data type. Right? And the whole reason this is happening is now we've changed the query just a little bit by trying to increase the scope of which rows right, are gonna get processed. We know, right, as the users, that these pages, these rows with you know, page names that contain number in them, only contain numeric data, but SQL Server doesn't know that. And so when it decides to change the order that it's filtering the data um, in our where clause, it breaks because it can't convert all of our other data in the table, right, which contains strings like ABC to a numeric data type. And so there's a few different ways we can go about trying to fix this. And like I said at the start of this video, none of these is a perfect solution. And so the first way we could try to remedy this is by adding an index. We can entice SQL Server to filter on our page name uh, column first and then do these implicit conversions. We create a non-clustered index where that page name is the leading key. And while that fixes the problem in this particular scenario, the, the bigger issue is that it's not guaranteed that it will always work. If our index decides to get dropped or replaced with something else, or even just modified to include more columns or different key column orders, um, or a, any a bunch of other different things that could happen, SQL Server can kind of go back to a, a plan where it's not filtering on that page name column first, and we're gonna get this error again about not being able to convert our varchar values to numeric data types, right? And I can prove to you that this isn't reliable because if we tweak our query just a little bit, right, imagine we wanna parameterize the page names. So we're gonna pass in a comma delimited strings with multiple page names, throw a, a, you know, a string split function in there, and you'll see that our query fails again. If we take a look at the estimated execution plane, you'll see what's happening, right? SQL Server in one of these flows has to parse our comma delimited string of page names, uh, and then it goes ahead and tries to join that with our, our uh, clustered index data, which does not filter on the page name first, right? It's gonna be doing that implicit conversion on the whole table, including the string data values, uh, which causes it to fail. All right, so relying on an index doesn't work. It's not a good solution. What else do we have available? One thing we could do is since we do have this data type column in our table, is we could try to use that to our advantage to uh, try to help direct SQL Server to know which rows to filter first to then be able to do these implicit conversions for a comparison. So if we add a filter to say, okay, only give me the rows where data type is equal to decimal, um, we may get this to work again and we may not. Once again, it's, it's one of those situations where it's not 100% guaranteed, depending on many different factors. Uh, SQL Server may choose to filter on that data type column first. It may decide to filter on the page name column first, um, or it may just fail because it tries to implicitly convert all our values first and it can't do that. All right, so one decent option that's available is to use the try convert function. What try convert attempts to do is convert a value, like a string in this case, to a different data type, decimal in this case, right? And if it fails, it's just gonna return a null instead of you know, bombing out and giving us an error message. Using try convert in our where clause works um, and it's, it's really, right, there's no downsides besides the fact that it's still having to do these implicit conversions. But like I said earlier, if we're not having that many rows return, uh, this may be a viable option. Another option we have is to actually add one more column to this table. We can make it a persisted computed column, which uses try convert to convert our data, right, which it may be numeric data types, may be string data types, to a decimal data type or whatever other data type of our choosing. 
This would then give us a defined decimal column that we can query against so we get rid of those implicit conversions. Uh, with the downside though that now we have to change a bunch of our queries and our, our logic uh, because now we're going to have to specifically say, okay, if we're dealing with uh, string data types, we're going to go look at the data type or the data value column. But if we're dealing with numeric data types with decimal data types, we're going to go look at this data type decimal column. So we might get better performance because we're not having to do those implicit conversions anymore, right? We can index these columns and stuff like that, obviously, but uh, it does come at the cost of having to change a lot of our queries and our query logic. Right, and so in conclusion, I don't know what the best way is. I don't think there is a best way and you just have to kind of make that choice for yourself. There's frequently a trade-off between your database design, your application design, uh, you know, how you want to have to maintain all this data, how easy you want the, to be to query this data, but if you do to decide to store multiple data types in a column, just be aware that you need to do some kind of additional error handling because a query that may work one day, right, may suddenly stop working another day when uh, the internal variables of that cost-based optimizer inside SQL Server, right, decide to now filter your query data in a different order. And so that's it for today's episode. Thank you for sticking on through all the different possible solutions until the very end. If you're not a subscriber yet, please be sure to click on that subscribe button below. That way you won't miss any of my weekly videos so you can continue to improve your SQL knowledge each and every week. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thanks.